Hello, all my Gemini friends. Ah, how are we? <laughs> this is Maxine Taylor, America's first licensed astrologer, and yes, I am a Gemini. Um, so I've got our April uh, forecast in front of me, but before I jump into that, to those of you who have been asking me to please offer a spring special because we need it more than ever. Uh, and most people can afford it less than ever. So if you go to my website, MaxineTaylor.com, you'll have all the information you need. I'm offering a special on every service that I normally offer. So. Looking forward to meeting you guys, at least on Zoom. So let's talk about the Gemini forecast. And I think I'll put on my glasses so I won't screw up because, you know, uh, sometimes, you know how it is with, with those of us born under the sign of Gemini. Um, we may be decades beyond 30, but we still think we're 30. Anyhow, okay, thus the glasses. Look at this great forecast. First of all, let's talk about Venus, the planet of love and money. It has been in our ninth house of publishing and high, our higher mind, and perhaps for some Gemini's long distance travel, um, higher education, but it's our principles. And on the fifth, today is the first, it moves into our 10th house of career and public image. And Venus is the lesser benefic. It brings blessings, it brings love, it brings money. It just smiles on us beautifully. And so this is true the world over. On the fifth, throw yourself into career, top slot, move upward. And we got help with Mars, the red planet, okay? Mars is in the ninth house, fighting for its principles, writing those books, trying to get them published, uh, maybe contemplating a long distance trip. On the 14th of the month, Mars enters the 10th house. And wherever Mars is, that's what comes first to us. So truth and justice and um, higher education, principles, concepts, that's where it's at now. By the 14th, we're taking what we learned in the ninth house and applying it to our career, to our public image, get ready to move upward. Okay, the sun, the center of our life is the yellow planet. It has been and will be in our 11th house of friends, uh, hopes and wishes, but humanity, it brings out the humanitarian in us, the philanthropic in us. In the 11th house, on the 19th, it moves into the 12th house of behind the scenes activities. And this happens every year, uh, the month before the sun moves into Gemini. So behind the scenes activities, this, is a, this can be a very spiritually enlightening time uh, because the 12th house is the subconscious. It is the spirit plane. Um, it gives you rest and relaxation. Awesome. Mercury, our conscious mind, um, starts off with the sun. And by the way, I want to mention that uh, Mercury enters the shadow of the retrograde on April 26th. So it's going to feel like Mercury is retrograde we will actually experience the retrograde Mercury uh, starting on May 10th. But on the 26th, it's gonna feel like Mercury's retrograde, uh, which of course it will be in May. And then after it goes direct, it will be in the shadow of the retrograde again. If you're planning a project, do it during the, the shadow of the retrograde because you don't wanna start a new project while Mercury is retrograde, but that'll be next month. Okay, so Mercury, the planet of communication, correspondence, transportation, 
is in our 11th house of friends and group activities. And we're longing to be with our friends. We want to talk to our friends. And there is lots of communication with friends, particularly those friends who have a, are of a higher mind, because the 11th house tends to be the house of the humanitarian. Love it. On the 10th, Mercury moves into the 12th house. And um, this is the house of behind the scenes activities. It's also the spirit plane. It's also the house of the subconscious. And so we're ruminating, we're meditating. On the 29th, Mercury leaps into our first house. And we say, let me tell you what I've gotten from spirit. Um, and Mercury in the first house tends to make us talk about ourselves. So, uh, and, and we are our most interesting audience. So <laughs> keep that in mind, okay? Now we've got three, lo three lunations. The first one is the new moon uh, on April 1st, that's today in 11 Aries 31, it's in our solar 11th house. Find this in your birth chart and you'll have a whole picture. The new moon is when things start growing. Energy starts moving forward, yeah. Two weeks later, we've got the full moon on April 16th in 26 Libra 46. That is in our solar fifth house. So we are ready to party with this full moon. We're ready to socialize. It's also the house of creativity. Are you starting a new book? It's also the house of children. Do you have any? They're going to want your attention. By the way, pets are children too. So everything comes to a head in the house of fun and games. Oh, I can't wait. And then we have a new moon, another two new moons this month, on the 30th in 10 Taurus 38. This new moon is a solar eclipse. Whenever we have an eclipse, um, it's very powerful because while the energy starts to grow, an eclipse is it's like a cosmic two by four. It's in our 12th house of the subconscious of behind the scenes activities. And so this is a time of preparation, uh, meditation, spiritual communication. I love it. If this eclipse falls on your sun, your moon, or your ascendant, it is a new life eclipse and it lasts for at least a year. Don't you love it? Find 10 Taurus 38 in your birth chart and combine it with this. So I hope this is helpful. I always love talking to my Gemini twins. So wherever you are, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.